Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number 32. My name is Keith. I'm here with the illustrious Doug. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing great. Good. Man, I got to tell everybody, Doug really stepped up in the planning. We kind of like go back and forth on finding things. This time, man, you were the heavy hitter on this. It's uh, it's pretty good, especially on the nerd news stuff. You found some interesting things. Yeah, you know, sometimes we struggle for news that we find relevant. I mean, there's news, but is it really news that yeah. we want to cover? Well, the whole reason why, like in this podcast, is like our thing is like, what are we interested in? What would we yep. want to know about? Um, and so you have to sift through a lot of garbage because someone's just kind of boring. You're like, oh, great. Another story about a Tesla. Who cares? Right. You know? So, well, and as you know, there's a lot of, there's always like a lot of AI news, which yeah. I'm thankful for because that, I don't know, that keeps, it's reoccurring. It's always something new and keeping it fresh. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah. And we're, uh, for our main topic, we're going to get into that here in a bit. It's kind of a continuation. I think last week, because we're in the fall, we did football games, uh, just to kind of get you in the mood. And we're going to talk about scary games since it's Halloween's right around the corner. We're going to talk about some of our favorite scary games. I know we're not going to cover all of them because there's a billion of them and I'm sure we'll miss some. Everybody can put in the comments what some of your favorite uh, games are that uh, this time of year you want to play to get in the mood for that trick or treatiness. But before we do, cue up the nerd news. Yeah, let's do it. Nerd news. Let's do it. All right. Let's get this bad boy shared. Oh, uh, boom. All right. Yeah, so the uh, first story we're going to talk about, and, uh, you know, everybody who got that new iPhone 16 is hopefully patiently waiting, uh, maybe a little upset, but Apple Intelligence is finally releasing next week. Now, let's not get confused with Apple Intelligence, all the features releasing. This is just the start of the rollout of the Apple Intelligence features. Baby steps, right? Yeah. Baby steps. Um and the thing is, I think I saw a chart that showed what features for each one, but it was a guess. It's like on Mac rumors or something yeah. like that. So we don't really know all of them. Um, does it go into this? Uh, it tells a little bit, but it's uh, not it's exact. A guess. You know, so the so we don't know. update is eighteen point one. As uh, people may know, we already have eighteen point zero one. That was just yeah. bug fixes. Yep. Uh, this is going to release some of the AI enhancements, I believe. Ooh, Hopefully, Jinmoji. it's going to be uh, a Siri. I hope Siri's not down the road fix. I hope Siri Siri's worthless. Chat GPT uh, yeah. integration. They do. You're right. They, they, it says here, Chat GPT integration, Image One, Visual Intelligence, Image Playground. Visual Intelligence was on the demo where the dude was walking on the street, took a picture, which I know Google's been able to do this for a while. So, but take a picture of the restaurant, and then it like tells you all this uh, menu and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Gen Moji is kind of cool. That was the thing where you can have it. You can tell it, I want a cat riding a unicorn, you yeah. know, smoking a cigar. <laughs> it just, it makes it. And then you can send it as a text. Yeah. So that's kind of, that'll be fun. I don't know how useful it'll be. Yeah. But... So the feature you were talking about was called Google Lens. Uh, yes. You can take a picture of anything. You can do live active uh, um, translations of other languages. Excuse me. Uh, the other thing listed here, Image Playground, I believe, uh, no, I could be wrong. I, I'm talking about Image Wand. I believe oh. Image Wand is similar to Magic Eraser yes, on the Pixel is. devices. Get rid of people in the background. Uh, yeah. Image Playground, I believe that's some virtual reality, but it could be wrong. Could be. I, I'm with you there. The chat GPT integration is my thing, especially if you already, I, I thought I read, if you already have a paid subscription, it'll be even better because sure. you can punch in your credentials for it. And then it'll even do even more um, within the phone. And I'm with you. I've, <sighs> Siri was great at first, but it has fallen so behind um, yeah. on, on everything. Yeah. See, I, my phone's lighting up right now. Siri's like, what do you want? It keeps, it keeps popping up. I haven't me. said that my phone's sitting right beside me. So. I know it's one of those things. So, but yes, I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm interested to see how this rolls out. Uh, it is important to note that this isn't just for the um, iPhone 16s. Uh, well, it has 15, 16s and it mentions, uh, iPads with an A17 Pro chip uh, and up. Uh, uh, yes, an M1. I'm, whew, I was looking for yep, my iPad. Has an M1. A, iPad M1 as well. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. <laughs> I love but those iPad. Uh, iPhone 15 users, you have to have the Pro and Pro Max. Just you do, because the chip, the chip set has to be able to handle yep. it. Because I think it's doing some local stuff with the LM 
S are uh, the language model system. So, all right, boom. Next up. Oh, they want me to sign up. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you know, buckets. we've talked about this a lot is these awesome buckets coming out nowadays. It's freaking cool. For uh, movie releases. The newest one, as we're looking, if you can't see, it is a gladiator's helmet. I believe the same style gladiator helmet worn by uh, uh, Uh-oh. Russell Crowe. Yeah, good oh, job. Ooh. Man, and that was like hurting my brain there for a second. Good, the good thing that the uh, the character name is on the screen, Maximus. Yeah. So. Yes, this was in the first one. Uh, that's really cool. Now, he's not, Russell Crowe is not in this new movie. I have heard that the pre-screening is very positive, and they're saying it's one of Ridley Scott's best movies since uh, he came out swinging, you know, before with some of the Alien movies. Oh, and, well, that's quite yeah, a statement. They're saying it's it's pretty good. A lot of people were skeptical. Uh, but that's a cool-looking bucket. Like, do you have to, is that just a, like, a helmet that's looks, on a bucket that's kind of it looks like a cover that you have to take off okay i guess that's not so bad you know the whole thing with dune and having to stick your hand in stuff that's uh, yeah, weird that's a little weird yeah i got a little odd the internet had fun with that one though so you know at least they didn't make a bucket for 50 shades oh never mind no, oh no. snap okay <laughs> oh Okay, we're not going there. This is yeah. family friendly, Doug. Oh, what are you yeah, doing? Sorry. What are you we'll, doing? We'll oh bleep God. that out later. In no, we won't. We're going to keep yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> I will say, I didn't know this movie was coming out November 22nd. That kind of makes me excited for right. Thanksgiving. That may be like a really cool like Thanksgiving uh, thing be. to go see. So, yeah. Awesome. Good timing. I'm excited. All right. Clicking through these. Oh, I'm excited about this. Now, this has been on again, off again. Um, I, I thought it was off again, but I had heard it's on. This looks like it's official. It is Netflix released a trailer for the Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson fight. Now, I'm going to be honest. I know this is a money grab. Uh, I know Mike Tyson's like way older, but come on, man. I, I'm the type of guy I would love to like see Michael Jordan in his current age uh, play somebody even newer. Like, I don't know. That's to me. I still think he'd, he'd school him. Uh, so that's my take. Personally, I want Mike Tyson to just uh, annihilate him. <laughs> Oh yeah, be fun. just be fun to watch. Uh, but have you seen the training videos of of Tyson? Oh, now? he's still fast. He's <sighs> so fast. The so, dude is scary. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned it, but Jake Paul is this guy that's uh, got some YouTube fame. He's a YouTuber. He's also kind of controversial in the videos that he makes. Uh, one of the first videos, I think. Including maybe, some uh, vulgar stuff, uh, sensitive items. So you might don't get him confused with his brother. So him and his brother, okay, did that YouTube may be together. Who I'm confusing. With yeah. Him. Now his brother hit the peak of controversy in Japan, where there's a yes. forest where people go to commit suicide, and, and that that's what I was referring. There's to. bodies there. Now I th- think his brother was a part of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there now Logan Paul is his brother. Now Logan Paul's actually doing stuff in the WWF. So he's actually a professional wrestling now. I, I got to give that dude credit. I've seen him do some incredible things in the ring. He's a very good athlete. Uh, his brother, Jake, I don't know, not so much. He's done some like low level boxing matches, but he's never really gone against somebody the caliber of. Uh, no, if we Tyson. look at their record, uh, Jake is at 10 and one with uh, seven knockouts. Tyson obviously has had a lot longer career, but fifty and six with forty four knockouts. But you got to look at who who is Tyson going against, man. Tyson's going up like some big time Buster uh, Bruiser, Holy uh, Evander Field. Holyfield, one of my all time favorites. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna watch this. I'm glad. Oh, it's on I'm Netflix. definitely gonna watch it. Yep. If it was pay per view, I'd pay for it. I mean, and I that uh, confuses me why they're not uh, doing pay per view or some kind of pay to watch uh, format. It may it may drive up Netflix, you know, it may drive up yeah. some s- subscriptions, but now I'm totally gonna watch this. This is gonna be awesome. I I just it's either gonna be over really fast or it's gonna be really boring if Mike, especially if Tyson gets tired, which I don't think he will, uh, and or if he takes it easy on him. I don't know. We'll just see. Well, well I see. think the uh, issue I saw that Jake Paul is having to gain weight to match the uh, he is. weight weigh in. Yeah, so that might be a downfall for him. I don't know. Well, and there were some rumors, like rumors that originally the fight had been called off, and it was because. Paul had gotten some cold feet about it. So, and then some yeah. part of me, the conspiracy theorist in me is like, how much of this is just like, this is like WWF and it's just a conspiracy and it's all already been predetermined because yeah. Tyson could murder him, but he won't because they could yeah. both stand to make a lot of money. I don't know. That's the conspiracy now, theorist in me. Is 
Just saying. It's good you say that because I think it was an exhibition <laughs> match where it's it is. kind of uh, loose. But no, they've changed it, I believe. I oh, did they? Right. They changed it to this counts towards their record. Okay. So I, then that makes it even better. Full on match. That still doesn't mean that like they haven't already got a, a plan for throwing. Well, no, it know. doesn't. But, <laughs> I hope yeah. not. I hope yeah. not. I, I I think this is entertaining. So yeah. I don't know. As long as we don't lose any ears, I think we're gonna <laughs> I know. Oh, too soon? Sorry. Okay. Have you seen the video between Tyson and Holyfield where yes. they, they've they've made up and he's like, yeah. I know what your ear tastes like. You know, so it's really funny. It's awesome. Yeah. So good find, man. Uh, yeah. When is this happening, by the way? Uh, I believe it's in November. November 15th. Uh, yep. Thank you. All right, man. I'm in. Watching. For sure. Cool. All right. Next up, man. You take it. Yeah. This one I thought uh, would uh, catch your attention, but Apple is teasing a week of Mac announcements starting on Monday. So that's just around the corner. I believe it's not really an event, but it's more maybe some updates and some uh, possible new product releases, some new chipsets. Yeah, they're talking about the M4 um, in different form factors, maybe. Yeah. They don't really say, do they? Oh, an iPad mini refresh. That would be interesting. Yep, which huh. they've already released the new iPad mini. Make sure I'm not late on it. No, yeah, this is fresh. So they may be talking about some uh, more enhancements to the iPad mini. They did kind of release it kind of, hey, here you go, without a big keynote address. Yeah. I don't know. This will be interesting. Well, the other thing is such a large portion of the last few events was the AI stuff. Yeah. So maybe this is these are little things that they wanted to throw in, you know. I don't know. No, I didn't know this. I'm glad you found it. This is This is interesting. Yeah, the M- M4. rumors mm-hmm. are a low-end, more affordable uh, MacBook Pro, 14-inch. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, got a new iMac, new Mac Mini, and maybe even an update to those Apple TVs, which I have to say real quick on a yeah. side note, Apple TV, oh my gosh, so much better. So I've been using the uh, apps. You're in the cold. My, I'm You're in, in the, the cold. cold. You might as well put a, put a robe the, on. Uh, apps on my t- <laughs> I I need a classy robe. No, no, what's going to happen? Doug's going to show up in a black turtleneck, those little rim glasses. He's going to be like this the whole time. Hey, Very Steve, we, Steve Jobs. I uh, I can find that pretty quickly, yeah. That could be your Halloween costume. Absolutely. And he'll say at the end of the podcast, but wait, There's one more thing. <laughs> one more thing. <laughs> He's becoming an Appleite. Look at I that. Am. No, you Apple know, TV. So what did you have before yeah. the Apple TV? So I use the onboard apps on the TV. They're so slow. They like lag out all the time. Yeah. You know, I, I think I would have respect you more if you said something like a Roku or, you know. Well, I did have an a Nvidia Google Shield. Chromecast yeah. That I stuck in the back of the TV, but it okay. got super hot and yeah. I was kind of worried about it. Ro- I was, Roku's aren't, are pretty good. I like Roku's. Um, yeah, I haven't had any of those. So. They're not bad. <clears throat> I've messed with them. They're good. Um, Chromecast, they're underpowered, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the worst you could do is to use the apps on your TV. Don't ever do that, people. Don't yeah. do that. Don't do that. Terrible. You'd be better just to have a gaming console. Oh, yeah. Like, and put it that in your so living room and slow. use that. We had so many issues. And uh, I think you told me, and I found out later, that they never update the uh, nope. firmware at all. So They don't. They don't. When they do, it's very it's rare. Too. And so it falls behind very quickly. My father-in-law had this issue. He bought a really nice TV and... Same issue, man. He kept coming. Oh, it's so slow. I kept saying, and he's anti Apple. Yeah. And so I kept saying, you got to do this. Now he was in IT for many years and a part of the old, you know, Windows Apple Wars, and he's still holding tight. Yeah. But he got an Apple TV, hasn't looked back, and he loves it. Doesn't have problems with it. So sorry, guys. If it works, it works. Can't argue with results. So yeah. All right, man. That's cool. I hope they do refresh the uh, Apple TV because it's a long time coming. I'll also say like. If they do a smaller version of the MacBook, like the 14-inch, the smaller versions of those MacBooks are actually pretty popular. Um, so I, I think that would be a very wise move for them. I'm still shocked that they discontinued the iPhone Mini because I, I, th- I knew a lot of people were really excited about that. Is you that know, the I, SE or what do they call that? No, it was called the, it was the iPhone Mini. Oh, um, okay. Actually, it's right here. My daughter had one. So it's like really, really oh, tiny. She's like a baby. Nice. Yeah. But they discontinued these. They don't make these anymore. And by the way, I have that because, well, she just changed her phone. So <laughs> if you're wondering why I have a random iPhone in reach, yeah, you I have technology everywhere in this house. All right. 
guess who's suing the FTC to stop to click or start? Sorry, the click to cancel the cable mm-hmm. industry. Of course, we talked about this, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, we talked about this last week, I believe. Uh, we talked about the FTC starting a stop to click uh, or click to cancel. Yeah, to uh, make campaign. it easy. Yep. Uh, we talked uh, last week about how it's so hard to cancel, say, DirecTV. I've had mm-hmm. a very negative experience. Um, a certain cable company that uh, supports our town. And I have a rant about cable companies. I can do it now or save it for later. That, give it now, man. Cable companies So suck. cable companies, <laughs> why are they not monopolies? Because you know this cable company comes in and they do the whole town. So yeah. the town that we live in is one cable company only. Well, because, I, I will explain to you, it's very okay. similar. If <clears throat> Now, it's not this way everywhere in the United States. But cable companies fall under the utility market. What That's that means. That's how they're getting around it, I guess. You have uh, regulated and unregulated states. In the state that we're in, it's regulated. What that means is for power, for telephone lines, util- water, basic utilities, by the way, cables included, zones are drawn. Oh, and okay. Okay. they say you're going to you're going to buy power from this place. You're going to buy water from this place. You're going to now in other places, uh, for example, in the state of Illinois, it's it's democratized. You have choice. You can choose your power company. So it's different in every state. But what we're used to in our state is that you only have that choice because cable companies got thrown into that category. That's why now the disruptor fiber optics, uh, a company in our town got some of the money uh, from the federal government, the, from the Rural Act, and yeah. they were able to put fiber all over the place. Well, they started to come into our town. That cable company got ticked and tried to cite it. But the thing is, fiber optics actually falls outside of the realm of utility space. Oh, good. But fiber optics can bring you internet, oh, television, so much faster. all of it. Oh, so God. it's been a thing. So the biggest threat to cable companies is fiber. So, But a lot of them cable companies are starting to switch over to fiber, try yeah. to compete. But they're I hate to, cable companies were the first. They're now they're now the dinosaur, and that's why they're so difficult to deal with. So, here's your little lesson. Uh, a little history on why I was so mad is I had AT and T service. The place that I lived in town, like in the city limits, you had DSL, still, didn't you? Uh, no, it was dial up. Oh, okay. Where I okay. lived, uh, way out there, uh, dial up, and I thought, really? And mm-hmm. then uh, cable company, and that's the whole story. So, okay. Yeah, man. Yeah, I've had every to, one of them. Yeah. Back to this. Uh, obviously, the cable companies are mad because that is the perfect opportunity for them to upsell you as you're trying to leave. Oh, yeah. So, they're of course, they're going to be upset. Yeah. They they want it to be hard for you to cancel yeah. uh, a subscription. So, yeah. This doesn't surprise me at all. Nope. All right. This one, I threw it in here for you only because we recently had this conversation about your love for the Sega Dreamcast. Um, Ooh, I haven't seen this yet. Yeah, this is new. This is my... Doug did all this. This is my contribution. Oh, very <laughs> nice. You have to tell me about this. It's I'm pretty looking. cool. So it's um, it's a way to celebrate Sega. Now, those of you who watch the podcast, I'm sure you know we've talked about these before. Sega used to be in the console wars during the 90s into the early 2000s. And, of course, they ended up getting out of hardware. Sega still exists today, but mainly as a publisher uh, of software. Now, they still front-end help publish and fund games, the software side of it, but they're out of the hardware game. Uh, because basically they got beat um, for a variety of reasons, and their last console was the Dreamcast. This is a really cool thing where they release metal diecast miniatures of the Sega line. Uh, they're about forty-four dollars a piece. I want to be mindful of that, but they are so cool looking, and they have them on Amazon. So these are collector pieces, and they have the Sega Genesis. They have the uh, Mega Drive, which was basically the Genesis, but a different variant of it. The Sega Saturn, the Sega Dreamcast. I think these are so cool looking. Now I don't really necessarily know how big they are. Let's go ahead and search. I don't think they're very big, but they come with a little controller connected to them. Um, let's see here. And they're pure metal, man. Yeah. And they're so cool looking. Well, I will let you know that I just pre-ordered one. Oh my God. You got the Dreamcast, didn't you? I did. So, uh, my estimated delivery is Friday, July 18th, 2025. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah. Cause they're not ready yet. No, but look, I look at this. it over real quick. July See, 16th. Don't, uh, my wife doesn't listen to this podcast. It's going to be okay. 
this is this is the good part about her not being interested in in, in your hobby. Oh, you can thank gosh. you can yeah. say and do whatever you want. It's like therapy, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, the pre order button was just right there. I had to click it. Yeah. Wow. You jumped on that pretty quick. I see. I saw this and I thought this is a Doug thing. It's oh, cute. No. It looks awesome, and it's great like it. right here oh, in my yeah. display. I don't so think it's very next big. July, tune in. Uh, little... It'll be there. They don't have any dimension. There we go. It's three by three, man. That's. Yeah, it'll be worth it. You can probably buy one on Timu in a week for four dollars. Oh, dang it! I should have waited. I can cancel my pre order. Yeah. Now, guess who's making this? Square Enix. Oh, yeah, nice. they're the makers of Final Fantasy, of course. So yeah. I thought that was an interesting thing that Square Enix is helping front end that this happen. So I don't know, man. I think it's really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Really cool. If you're a collector, if you just love systems like this, um, it's cute. I like it, but I thought of you because I was like, "Oh man, Doug's gonna want to get himself one of these uh, these Dreamcast." Oh this, uh, yeah, you you got me. <laughs> yeah, line and sinker. He so, does this know, to me uh, sometimes, guys. So don't. He, he's like, "Well, yeah, we go look at this," and I'm like, "Whoops, I ordered it." Yeah, <laughs> like the uh, Elgato Neo system. You bastard! It's right here in front of me. It's beautiful, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, see, we're bad. We're bad influences on each bad other. Bad influence, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I can, I can tell. That's why when we were having the conversation with, uh, with, with Neo Ness, and we're starting to compare the things that we like, I thought, oh no, we're getting a bad territory because people like us, we start talking like the three of us are talking. You know, somebody's gonna be buying something. <laughs> it's, it's, it's scary. Okay, so that. Pretty much does it for our news. Before we get into our main topic, though, you had an honorable mention you wanted to get into. Which one do you want to tackle? I think there's two honorable mentions you want yep. to get into. Which one do you want to tackle first? Well, one's more of a gripe, but I'm probably going to do it anyway. Uh, Call of Duty 6 came out. And, you know, well, it was a gripe until I looked at some stuff today. So Call of Duty 6 came out, uh, Black Ops 6 to be specific. I thought, you know, what's the difference? I've been playing Warzone. I haven't bought the big version mm -hmm. but my argument is why does it release every year when it should be like a subscription-based model if that makes sense mm -hmm. um i mean 60 dollars for a new game that you have to get a whole new file or 60 dollars just to update the file you have so that could be a dumb argument is this like a whole like a, break this down I, i've been out of the call of duty game for a bit um, so it's basically a brand new game it is a new game okay yeah but uh my thought was People love Call of Duty. Why not make it a subscription? Like, that would make just sense. Just get uh, big updates every year. I, I thought I picked a video. But so my positive uh, note is I've read that they've kind of gone back to the campa campaign mode, excuse mm -hmm. me, and they've made it a lot better. Because that's the one thing that uh, I love. Oh, the stories? Call of Duty back in the day was the stories. Yeah. And I've read, I have not <laughs> played this, I've read that it went back to uh, being pretty good. So you've not played this yet? I have not. Okay, my son got it. Uh, I don't know if he played it yet. I think he he bought it, but I don't think he's played it yet. The game's always beautiful. I will say oh, that. Uh, yeah. And I'm with you because you know I'm a big single player guy um, because I love story driven narrative. And I did in when I played Call of Duties back in the day, especially the World War II ones. It was for the story. Uh, I didn't really. I love the zombies because I love I love team matches better than i do because i mean I, I suck uh i'm i'm old anymore i don't have my you know m my counter-strike days are well behind me i used to be really good at counter-strike like og counter-strike yeah. man i'm not like that anymore uh so yeah i'm the guy that's why i always kind of more lean towards battlefield because and i don't know you can tell me if they had it in this or not but i was always like i love support class because i feel like i can actually give toward the battle like i can i can throw med packs i can give ammo i can build up fort fortifications where if you're just going to want me to go out there and do a headshot city nah i'm going to get annihilated so i don't know i've been out of out of this world for a while but i i, I know it's pretty popular yeah the only mode i've played uh with uh, some of our friends is uh the war zone mode or just the kind of free modes available online those are very enjoyable to me you get to yeah. customize everything from your gear and your guns and all kinds of stuff did you do you ever do the zombies i did it was yeah. really good so they do a couple of free weekends mm -hmm. and uh the zombie mode was pretty fun you get to turn into a zombie and chase people yeah. around uh rumor i think i put this in the notes 160 gig 
Yeah, that's for this the other thing. So I guess this is more of a question to you: Is should it be subscription based instead of a year early release? And then the really huge file size. You know, you have a one terabyte Xbox or PlayStation, whatever, before expansion. 160 gigs, that's a pretty good hefty amount. So I'll answer that. Those are two questions. The first one is the file size is getting so massive. It's because they're using extremely high textures and they don't compress them at all. They have no reason to because of the power of a lot of consoles and, and, and desktops. So to me, it's a bit lazy. Back in the Doom days, man, you had to compress it or it couldn't, it wouldn't play, right? So you had to have it be really efficient in performance and tightly optimized. That's the old man of me talking. Uh, so that's one. Good. Number two, I think subscription model is a great idea. However, I think they make a butt ton of money because of microtransactions. Oh, I mean, think yes. about it, all, all the vanity yeah. gear and then the add-on packs. Like I've seen, I, we were just on that website and they're like, oh, they have the elite version and you get this special body armor. And da, 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 mm -hmm. da. like, I think they're making a butt ton of money on microtransactions and selling it as a whole unit, you know, to it. So. Yeah, that's why I don't think they I, I think they've probably done the math and you get more hype around a new release. It's I think it's harder for subscriptions when they do new models to get hype around it. So I think it's money. So that's all it is. And you remember the story of the, the, the former president. And I don't know if it was Call of Duty. It may have been. He wanted to charge every time he reloaded your clip a dollar. You remember that story? Oh, yes. Yeah. Which. Oh, my God. I'd, I'd yeah. be too much money for I'd take a loan out. I, I think that's why. It didn't go anywhere. Anyway, is that your rant? Is that your you got you good? It's more of a rant, more of a question. But yeah, I think that takes care of that. Uh, we can move on to the next one. The next one's interesting. I didn't I didn't expect you to to throw this one up. What am I looking yeah. at? So over the weekend, uh, well, it's been a week or two. Uh, time flies by. I actually enlisted the help of your brother to put in a new hard drive, or yeah, memory <laughs> stick hard, hard drive, drive. in uh, my Steam Deck. I uh, re recently acquired the Steam Deck. I've been loving it. So what you're looking at now is some of the emulation. I'll talk about yeah. that in a second. I love in the background, he has the Vince McMahon a documentary there. Uh, oh, that's awesome. I, the Shawn Michaels, man. I yeah. saw it. Look at that. And that was a good documentary on Netflix. It's great. If you well, you're, seen it. you're geeking out, that's for sure. All right, oh, so yeah. you, you got your emulator going on. Yeah, Ooh. so as we go through, uh, I said, hey, I would really like to get pictures to uh, put on the podcast. He said, absolutely. So here we see him taking apart the uh, Steam Deck, taking that back panel off. He's These got some are, special they make it, tools. They make it so easy. I love how they made the Steam Deck so easy. Before you go on, let's talk oh, oop, to yeah. the uh, – no, no, you can stay on the next yeah. image. Okay. For those that are watching the video format, let's talk about the – Evil, no, not evil, evil. The awesome lab or the lair that Brian <laughs> exists in. You, you know, you're in Brian's lair when there's just a random GameCube. Evil's the, the wrong word. Amazing <laughs> was the right word. So I look around as he's working on my Steam Deck, and there are Xboxes, Nintendos, there's uh, GameCubes, there is just skeletons of stuff. It's because everywhere. my brother is a mad scientist of retro Absolutely. video gaming. Yeah. Uh, he has. You turn around, I bet if you turn around behind you, you'd see a full-size Outrun yeah. arcade oh, yeah. cabinet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the dude, yeah, he just, it's, yeah, it's, he's like a mad scientist. So of, I was uh, able to get some of the awesome uh, experiments or projects going on in the back room, but back to the Steam Deck, yes, we're looking yes. at the internal boards here. Yep. Uh, he knew exactly what he was doing. Uh, mm -hmm. It didn't puff up and smoke or anything. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, he's good uh, we switched it out from a 512 to a one terabyte drive. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was really good. Yep. Uh, it's real quick. me right there, the heat sink. That's what mm -hmm. he's pointing at, I believe. Yep. Uh, an M.2 chip is what you're doing. Now, you, what was the size? You went to a one terabyte? I believe so. Um, I've got it here, but. There I, it is. He's holding. Yeah. yeah. He's holding one of them. Yeah. It's so easy to swap these things out. Um, I really like how modular they make them. It just yep. takes seconds and then clicking it and back then on. And snapping it right back. Yep. Yeah. It worked great. Yeah. So now we do have a lesson for people to learn here. Oh, yeah. What's that? Please take out your micro SD cards. You didn't take it out? Nope. It shot across the room and it kind <laughs> of uh, <laughs> it bent in half and we Aww. lost an SD card in the process. But that's okay. It wasn't a big one, was it? Uh, uh, it was a better. one terabyte. Holy crap. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, you you living well. Life. That's our bad. So, do you have it booted up after you got it rebuilt? Is that what that is? 
Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Now this is me coming back home. I was able to buy a dock on Amazon. Yep. I got it hooked up to my computer monitor, which I'm looking at now. It works great. Was this when I was in Florida and you were texting me about? I think I think my monitor or my Steam Deck's bad or whatever. Yeah. It was your cables, wasn't it? It was cables. I had a bad okay, cable. Um, the docking station. Oh, I actually have it right here. I can show it. Uh, JSOX, uh, really oh, nice. I have the same uh, one. It comes with the USB cable that Love kind it. of bends over. Yep. And uh, really nice ports on the back. Sorry, I don't have another camera to no. be cool. But That's the exact dock I have, and I love it. I have it, it on my... so great. Yeah. Dude, I have it on my 75-inch in my one game room we have. And, uh, dude, it works great. It's so good. Yep. I love it. And so especially, my... you put all the games on there. Now, did, oh, now yeah. let me ask you, did you put all your ROM emulated games on the internal M.2? What'd you do? I just did not. They were on that uh, micro SD. I've that's what I to did. get a new micro SD. Yeah. Black Friday's right around the corner. I'm going to pick up cheap. another terabyte or a 512. Oh, yeah. You can get them cheap. That's what I did. Because I put, I don't play a lot of AAA titles on it. Honestly, I love it for being a retro machine. And oh, absolutely. It, they, and those kinds of games weren't great. Now, if I have a heavier yeah. end game, like a GameCube or something, I'll, I'll, I'll run it from the ROM on the internal circuit. That's faster. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And Pro that tip. might be something I need to uh, take care of. Yeah. Like, or, or keep it in the back of my mind. Yep. So. And Brian also got a uh, Steam Deck the same time you did. So he has yeah. one now, too. So he's yeah. been playing with it. He got Bada Sarah. Which, if you don't know, Botticera allows you to... It has an independent operating system and allows you to boot from the chip. It doesn't even install on the deck itself. You oh. put the chip in and it boots off that. And all the games in the operating system are independent. It's, it's running a version of Linux. I have yet to get over there to see it. I, I've been so busy with work that I'm, he's going to show me how that works in the build. But at, what that means is literally, if anybody had a team, but you just give them that chip, they... They put it in, they hold down a certain button combination, boot off of it, all the games are there, and you're never even messing with the stuff on the deck. It's genius. It's so cool. Genius. Yep. All right. Hey, uh, as we're moving on to our main topic, yeah. I uh, went to chat GPT while we were talking there. Yep. Uh, Activision Blizzard has made roughly $1.7 billion just from in-game purchases as of last year. So that is your answer as to why they don't go to a subscription model, I bet. And that's but, that GPT, take it for granted. I have not fact-checked that completely. But but I will say, though, um, you know, mm, Blizzard does have a subscription model with World of Warcraft, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. I wonder how that number fits in with their MMO. Um, I could, I don't know. But, but, but they also made Diablo. That's not subscription. They do a new oh, version yeah. of that, and there's yeah. microtransactions in that, so... I don't That's know. just my thought, because uh, it seems to be between game modes and weapons and skins, it seems to be almost, and don't hurt me, uh, Call of Duty fans, the uh, same game every year. You know, it's kind of true. Which that, that can way. be said about a lot of other Dude, games. Dude, I kind of feel that way about um, sports games, like Madden. I feel yeah. that way about the WWE. The, the last 2K4 was awesome. I did end up getting five because it was cheap. But I feel like it's relatively the same game, just maybe a little yeah. tighter controls. Yeah. It's almost like on sports games, like I'll get in the mood. I want to play a basketball game. I'll wait like a couple years just so that it actually is a different game. Got some new features and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. All right, let's jump into our main topic. We're heading full on into Halloween. Yeah. And we kind of did a version of this last year. But what I love that you did, you found, and I haven't even thought about this. So to get you in the mood of Halloween's, we're wired nerdy. We're all about nerd culture geek culture yeah. like what are the things that you can consume and check out to kind of get you in that and we're going to pick some of our favorite video games that are kind of scary um but you picked you put comic books in here that's genius man and i was flipping through some of these and i've never heard of them because i'm a little bit out of the comic book game some i have read and now i want to go pick them up because you read some of the descriptions some of them sound really creepy and yeah phew, yeah i don't know there's like 20 of them in here uh it's funny they put an archie which i don't know if you know this Afterlife with Archie. It's like a, a whole thing with the Archie comics. Huh. Uh, Riverdale, by the way, the TV show, um, kind of spun off from like the darker Archie comics. I don't know. People, most people don't know that. Uh, well, many people do actually probably know that. Uh, but this is, I've heard that these are actually supposed to be pretty, pretty decent. Uh, Sandman. I am almost done reading that entire comic series and it is oh, nice. so good. Uh, I haven't watched the Netflix show yet. 
Uh, yeah. So these hey, are Neil excellent. Neil Gaiman, you know, uh, we've talked about Neil Gaiman on the show before. Good uh, yeah. Amazing. So many good uh, movies from his books. You know, you always worry about a book to movie adaptation being mm-hmm. terrible, but they've been great so far. Yeah, they have been. Uh, some of these are just really, really good. And I haven't read them. Oh, my God. Arkham Asylum, a series, a serious house on serious earth in 1989 this one is messed up it's so good it's batman series you know the other thing we talk about so scary good. comics scary games this would get me because some of the illustrations on not the scary version but normal version they're so immersive and uh, graphic mm-hmm. so i can only imagine the horror theme added to it well in in the things with comic books especially nowadays is that even back into the eighties and nineties, like they're able to push the envelope on the drawings. I remember the, uh, the series with Batman where Joker actually cut his own face off and then wore it oh. as a mask. Uh, oh yeah. It was as creepy as I'll get it. Like the artwork just kind of gives you the chills. It's, it's nuts. Um, this one's cool. This one's called something is killing the children. Oh boy. And, and it's about these like otherworldly beasts in these, in this forest that are, that has a, uh, they basically eat children. And they have to figure out what's going on. Like I, I went through and read some of these. I'm like, wow, these are these are fascinating. There's some really good ones. So I'm gonna definitely bookmark this. And uh, a lot of them are murder mystery. You know, yeah. some are you know supernatural that sort of thing. Um, I do think it's interesting. The number one on the list was um, Yuzu Maki, which it's in the same type of horror realm as The Ring. Which, which that's creepy. scary as all get out. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, man, I'm glad you found those. So if you guys are into comics, uh, definitely check out some of these comic books. This this article is out on Games Radar. Uh, we'll, we can put the uh, the link in the show notes. Absolutely. And if you all have any uh, comics that you think uh, fit this category, put them in the comments. We'll uh, bring them up on the next show. Definitely. All right. <clears throat> so video games. Now, you have this list here. Uh, we're going to run through... The upcoming October is stacked with new horror. So we're going to run through the list of new horror games coming through here. And then we're going to go through like our personal favorites, what we like to play this time of year. Um, now, I'm not like, what you feel on horror games? Like, I, I have to, I kind of feel the same way about like horror games that I do about uh, movies. Like, I'm not like, like, for example, Terrifier 3. It's all about the gore. I'm more of like a quiet place, suspenseful kind of guy. I did see Long Legs recently, and it was Chef Kiss amazingly good. I like more of a psychological thriller than I do just a whole full on gore fest. What are you? What's your preference? Uh, I'm the same way, basically. I don't like jump scares. I really don't like horror movies. I mean, you can call me a wussy, but jump scares get me. <laughs> and uh, as I get older, I got to worry about this ticker. You the know, old ticker. So. Yeah, take it. Well, some of the games that I know we'll talk about a bit, they do have some jump scares. But uh, this is interesting. This is one. It's called Moving Houses. It's out October one, so, so it's already released. Uh, it says it looks very cheerful imagery, but don't let it fool you. Basically, it's a home redecorating simulator, but it says it hides um, something beneath the surface, and so. I don't know if you find like dead bodies or what when you're re- redoing these homes that you have to flip or what, but that's a fascinating premise. Very fascinating. <laughs> now this one's making a comeback. Uh, I didn't play it, which is odd for me because I am such a massive predator aliens fan. Mm-hmm. Um, you and I talked about getting into this one because we were going through our alien fire team elite mode. Yep. Uh, but this is a predator hunting grounds where one group of people, play the humans and the other plays the alien and you basically hunt each other they re this didn't do great when it first came out but i think they've re-released it and reskinned it tightened it up i hear it's supposed to be really really good but it's 4v1 so did you ever play it i did not uh it looked good i watched some gameplay it's uh you know we if you remember back to the predator arnold schwarzenegger all that it seems to be an unfair advantage but, uh, you know, Arnold uh, getting the best of the Predator back in the days. He's awesome. Don't forget about my boy. My boy Danny Glover, number oh, two. Oh, absolutely. Mm, yeah. I love Danny Glover. Okay, Until Dawn. Now, I have played this. It's good. It reminds me more of like a choose-your-own-adventure in that it's playing it like a movie. It's all motion capture. Really good yeah. story. It's classic, like, 80s slasher, monster in the house kind of thing. You got to hide behind, you know, under the bed. And the, the idea is you have a group of teenagers that are going to go to a cabin to have sex, essentially. And the decisions you make, like whether you don't, you know, jump 
dodge. Some of it's timed events when you're being cha chased uh, or quick snap decisions. It's permadeath. So as you go through and each teenager, one will get killed. Boom. It jumps right over to the next group that's somewhere else in the cabin or in the woods. And your goal is to get any of them to survive. And it is a very interesting take on games. There are definitely some jump scares in it. Um, I like it. It's fun. It's good. It's a different. It's a different. Yeah. Some of the gore in it's kind of laughable, though. It goes over the top sometimes with some yeah. of the kills. Yeah. So, but it's good. It's good. Now, this one, the description just caught me immediately. It is a mashup of Lethal Company and Supermarket Sweep. It's called Seven Minutes in Hell. Never so the description is it plays out like a sinister game show where contestants <laughs> in a solo or multiplayer match have seven minutes to scrounge up as much loot while avoiding monsters and obstacles in the labyrinth. Fascinating. It kind of reminds me of uh, Running Man, mm. but with a horror theme to it. I like it. I love Running Man. Originally written as a short story by Stephen King, by the way. It was a great movie, yeah. Very good. I heard they're redoing it, though. I don't think they oh, should. Yeah, yeah. Don't mess with it. Uh, now, I had this on my list yeah. only because the remake just came out. So this is Silent Hill 2 remake. They say it is excellent. Originally, PlayStation? PlayStation uh, 2? I believe so, yes. Um, really scary games. They had, like, the triangle head dude. And, like, these games are messed up. The graphics, have you seen the footage of this game? Oh, they look great. Oh, it looks uh, There was a side-by-side -side comparison on YouTube. Oh. I can't remember the channel, Yeah, but it looks impressive. Yeah, time. so I took this one off my list because it was on this list. It just came out. Um, I I think I want to go back and play it. It's been so long since I played it. I'm almost like, well, should I go back and play the first Silent Hill? You know, I don't know. These are really good, though. Yeah. Um, definitely not for the faint of heart, though. There's some pretty scary stuff in these. Uh, this looks cool. Dead Season. It's a zombie apocalypse. Now, what I love about this, it's like XCOM. Yeah. You put this on. I love XCOM games, which are turn-based tactical. We get, this is awesome. I am so adding this to my Steam list, man. It's right in my because I love XCOM games, especially on my Steam Deck. Because it's something like you can sit back, chill, make decisions about, you know, where you yeah, want to go. Yeah, it's good to think and, about what you got to do. I love the tactics. So this looks awesome. And I love zombie stuff because I'm a huge Walking Dead fan. Because I read the comics before I even watched this show. So. Uh, World War Z. Yeah, the, the book's better than the movie, though. By the way, just just so you know. But yeah, this is awesome. Uh, this looks messed up. <laughs> it looks way messed up. It's a very uh, old school cartoon style. I don't even know what's going on. There's a kid with Mickey Mouse ears threatening a sheep with a knife. Called Amanda the Adventurer. And it says it's PC and Switch gamers may have already experienced unique horrors of the twisted take on children's TV shows. But if you are wanting to play it on other platforms, the wait is almost over. The game blends bits of first person exploration, puzzle solving with point click mechanics. Uh, think Dora the Explorer only with murder. Oh, there <laughs> we go. Fascinating. Oh, did you ever play this? I did. Daisy, uh, Daisy I did not. Uh, looks like they're coming out with an expansion. They are. So DayZ was based off of, uh, there was a military simulator that was made by some European, Eastern Europeans. Um, it's called uh, Arma 3. And it was meant for like training, military training. And it was very good. Somebody created a mod for it called DayZ and they basically, it's zombies. And the idea is it's, it is permadeath, but you're talking, you have to manage your it's survival. You, you have to manage your um, water intake, your temperature, weather, it's a hard, hard game. I played it early, early on, and it it goes deep. And there's a cult following to this, and so it's been around for a while now. Um, they almost say that you know, the people in the game are kind of like Walking Dead are definitely far more dangerous than the zombies because they'll just cap you as you're walking across the field. <laughs> but it's a fun game if you want to get into it. Yeah, it looks oh, good. you did. You get this one. Quiet Place uh, is becoming a video game. You know, the movies are great. The Quiet Place, Quiet. Place Two and Day One or Quiet Place Day One mm -hmm. uh, just came out. Really, really good. I loved it. Yeah. John Krasinski from yep. The Office uh, fame uh, directed the first two. I think he kind of helped with the third one. Um, I producer. wish he would taken more of a lead because mm -hmm. I didn't really feel like the stuff I felt with the first and second one. I get it. It was definitely missing something. It was a it was a grand. It was a little bit of a bigger story because it was in the city. But I, personally. I loved it. I, I still yeah. love the last one, but oh, I love this. Still great. Yeah. I love the whole universe. Um, supposedly in this game, y your microphone actually 
does matter if it hears you oh. say or do anything. This is a sound based game. I was reading about it, which is, you know, pretty, pretty cool idea. Yeah, definitely. All right. <laughs> Retro Realms. This I've heard about this. This is cool. Halloween and Ash versus Evil Dead. So it's like a pixel beat em up. But they took, uh, I believe, some classic horror characters um, like Ash from Evil Dead. Uh, I think Michael Myers is in it. Um, and basically, the, it's very gory. This looks fun. I don't know if you've ever seen this one. I have not. No, yeah, I've seen a lot of advertisements for it. I do like the uh, retro thing. Uh, I think you just said that, but like uh, the new Ninja Turtle game. Yeah, yeah. It's very pixelated. It's like 1632-bit-ish graphics, maybe. There's something about that. You know, you don't have to have the best, most realistic uh, Mm -hmm. graphics. Sometimes you need to go back to the basics. I know. I love pixel art games. I really do. Uh, Bloomhouse, which is a Hollywood uh, production company that has been known to do tons of them. I guess they're getting into gaming, and this one's called Fear the Spotlight on October 26. It combines a early PlayStation aesthetic with an over-the-shoulder perspective, all done in service to spooky story about two high school friends and ghostly mischief. That's interesting. I don't know. You get this one. Uh, oh, this actually looks good. So, no more room in hell, too. Uh, it, it looks like a first-person shooter slash slasher. Um zombies or some kind of demons they compare it to left for dead yeah yeah which i love left for dead left for so dead is great yeah oh yeah so i didn't even know there was a first one it says no more room in hell two i didn't know there was a first one uh we already talked about the that's on there twice amanda adventures yep alan week two now i played the first one i had high hopes for it it was kind of mad but i've heard two is supposed to be really really good i don't know yep. if you ever played these i have not <laughs> this looks like an expansion forward to it is an expansion for two. Yep. Thank you for okay. that correction. Uh, but two got a lot of popular feedback. Um, on, and I know they did a remake of one. Uh, Forest Hills, the last year. I haven't this heard is of a that one. Player versus player. This is big on Steam. Oh, okay. um, yeah, it's PvP. And so, like a survival horror game. Uh, the Axis Unseen. This is now, survival This could horror. be something that's from a former uh, Bethesda dev. Oh. Uh, it's a first person survival horror. You see, it's uh, interesting. A first-person survival horror and hunting game in which you track and kill mythical beasts. That sounds cool. It does sound cool. It's kind of like The Witcher, but uh, yeah. Cabela's big game, Hunter. I love it. Man, I'm going to be adding a lot to my, my Steam wish list. Post-trauma delayed till 2025, so they're probably still working oh. on it. Let's see, what's this one? Interesting, a blend of old and new ideas in the horror genre. Gameplay is presented by way of fixed camera angles. Classic PS1 and PS2 horror games. So that kind of makes me Resident Evil, which I'm sure we'll talk about here in a bit. Interesting. Yeah. Clock Tower Rewind. That looks very anime. It looks, yep. It says it's a 2D style. 2D style horror game predates basically every other horror series you may know by now any other that kind of makes me think it was uh i think i played this way back in the long day. time <gasps> it does sound familiar did they like this is a remake it's uh been... yeah it came out for the super famicon in 95 there is why clock tower series has been dormant for a long time. so this is a revitalization so but... super nintendo super famicon depending on where you were in the world that's why it sounded sounded familiar to me yeah if sunset this is a survival game uh, during the day, you'll hunt for food and craft for items and fortify your domain and prepare yourself for the unforgiven nighttime hours during which monsters emerge. And... Similar to uh, like seven days to die? Or... Yeah, the bull rush your fortress. They're described yeah. as relentless. <laughs> this kind of sounds interesting. If you can play with your bros, I think this would be good. Yeah. This would be good. So uh, looks like a good list there. Looks like old school. Yeah, that's a good list. It does. All right, man, you found some good stuff there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the share, get to our ugly mugs here, because we have our, our little list here yeah. up. As you want to go first? Uh, yeah, you're setting that up. Uh, we uh, have to start off the list uh, with Resident <laughs> Evil 2. Uh, Resident Evil, you know, gets us into that kind of puzzle horror genre, solving the puzzles, uh, going down the uh, creepy owls. Now, Resident Evil, I think, had some bad camera angles or good camera angles, uh, depending on your style. It but made it more was, challenging. It yeah. did. There were some times you go around a the corner, there's a, those evil dogs or a zombie or something waiting. But I think Resident Evil really was the just coup de gras, as I could say. 
but it uh, worked on the camera angles. It had better puzzles, better monsters, better graphics. I'm with you. Uh, two, I stopped playing them at two. I got to be yeah. honest with you. Uh, it was my all time favorite. I loved one, uh, but two is my all time favorite. Um, now, I just bought recently on an Indie hum- Humble Bundle for PC the entire Resident Evil series and the oh, remastered. Right. So it was Resident Evil, like the OG PlayStation style, but then also the remastered version of it. Um, and I plan on, I'm going to play back through the whole series, starting with the first one all the way through, but there's so many, there's like resident evil zero and Veronica. They Code Veronica. The thing, yeah. yeah. They got villages was really good. That like, code Veronica. I think that was, uh, was that dreamcast? Uh, it was actually on more than one system. Uh, now uh, was resident evil called biohazard in uh, Japan. Uh, no, it was biohazard was in it. It's creepy. I watched my son play that one a long time ago. It's in an old house. Of oh, a bunch okay. of like red, I it's that very was the other name for it. very chainsaw massacre like is what what that one was, and you're in like a house of crazy people. Okay. Uh, but you can't go wrong with Resident Evil this time of year. So, all right, is it my turn? All right, I, I beat this recently only because it was free on my PlayStation. Uh, the Callisto Protocol, get it right here. Um, this. Okay, so this game got a lot of hate at first. Everybody was excited because it was a it's a spiritual successor to Dead Space. Now, oh, yeah. I've never played Dead Space. Okay, and this is where you can hate on me because I'm sure you've you probably have played Dead Space, right? I've played a little bit of it. I uh, owned it back on uh, PS3. Or am I wrong? Or uh, it could be. It very well could be. I I never I never got into it. I, um, yeah, I think I have it on my PlayStation service now. So no, I'm going to go back to Dead Xbox, Space. And, Xbox. Yeah. Xbox, okay. Uh, yeah. But I will tell you, what, this came free as a part of my subscription service. And the motion capture in it was excellent. The story was good. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this game. And I will say, uh, there were moments of jump scares. It wasn't a lot. I was probably like two of them or so that uh, really got me. You're going around a corner and it just like, you know. Like, get you. Yeah, came out of nowhere. So uh, I enjoyed it. It was a fun playthrough. It was It was a short game, which I did, you know. I really kind of appreciate it because, uh, you know, when you have limited time. So I thought this was good. A lot of people, I think it was an excellent game, but people were expecting it to be Dead Space or better. And it wasn't. Yeah. But to me, because I don't have frame of reference of Dead Space, I felt it was a good game. So that's mine. What's your Absolutely. next one? Absolutely. Yeah. So the next one, I uh, looked uh, while I was researching, I looked <laughs> through some lists. Uh, Blue Stinger is the next oh, one. You mentioned this. I had to look it up. So while I was looking through list of like uh, trying to agree or not agree with other people on the best horror games, I thought, you know, back to my time to the Dreamcast, Blue Stinger. So to set that up, it's a RPG. It's not really well known. You, I know. I hadn't heard of it. Something happens to this island while you're fishing and you got to go save the island and this little... Blue. You, you get marooned. I was reading about it. Yeah. So you get marooned on an island and then you got to like, it's kind of like figure something out, but there's an alien or something. It's a, it's a weird story. It, it's very weird, but it had some jump scares and it had some monsters. So now, I thought an honorable mention at least. I did read something fascinating. Did you know the difference between the US release of this for Dreamcast and the Japanese version? I do not. I will tell you. The U.S. version had third person over the shoulder following the character. Oh, that would have been helpful. Japan was static camera like Resident Evil, where it stays in one place and you have to walk around. So Japan's version was more Resident Evil style. Well, ours, it actually followed the character. Um, You can see like kind of. Yeah, see how it's following him around the camera Mm -hmm. moves. Uh, see that the yep. Japanese version stayed fixed in a corner. So, oh. yep. well, you can I tell remem- that's definitely yeah. I remember playing Dreamcast. it. Now there's some funny uh, weapons and stuff. I think it tried to be like what, is uh, that a lightning stick. What is he? Yeah, <laughs> and then you could play little mini games. <laughs> you know, I love the aesthetic. Just looking at the game engine, it that is so Dreamcast. Oh yeah, you can just tell by it. You can tell it's Dreamcast. And it's sad game. that Dreamcast failed, but that's oh a man, whole you have a shotgun too. We talked about. Yeah. I had to play this one on uh, on some some emulators, man. I had to find this bad boy. I hadn't and, heard of it. Yep. So you get to play as Elliot. Or see, he's wearing a Santa, Santa outfit. That's hilarious. It, it had some goofy stuff like yeah. uh, other games do. Yeah, but I can see you run around a corner or something really big oh. there. I can see that they oh. compared it to a Resident, like a goofy Resident Evil. Oh, it was Gatling goofy. Gun. That's fun. Yeah. All right. Hey, you picked a, a very obscure deep cut. I appreciate you for that. Yeah. No problem. 
All right. Next one is my wife's all time favorite game. Oh, yes. I've seen it. I have not <sighs> have you played it. it? Have you I played the, it? I have not. I love the black and white to it. The aesthetic of this game is limbo. Um, is so, so good. Um, so basically it's black and white and they never fully tell you what's going on. You're almost like in a, this little boy's dream yeah. and he's a shadow of himself and you have to get through these obstacles. And a lot of it is puzzles. You got to think through counterweight things, jump time things, certain ways. Uh, but where it gets creepy is that the deeper you get in the game, you'll see other children hanging swinging like suicides or or murders in the distance oh, yeah. you see there's in the game periodically there is this massive spider big ma- it takes up your whole screen and it's like coming after you and you have to run from it like this game will give you the you you want to get panicked when you're getting chased by this thing uh, this game is impeccable i you have to play it it's one of my wife's all-time favorite games um and uh yeah it is just, it's a chef kiss game, indie game. It's beautiful. They made another one that was a little bit shorter called inside out that actually played in beat. Um, yeah, man, you've got to play this. If you don't have it, you need, you, it runs great on steam deck by oh, the way good. too, but I'm it's creepy. It. Yeah. It's a creepy game. And it's funny because you think how to be creepy. It's all black and white, but it just, it is because stuff that comes at you, it's nuts. It's nuts. So that's one of my picks. You're up very, next. Yeah. Very good pick. Uh, Silent Hill, I got to throw that out there. Super creepy. We've talked about it a ton on the uh, show. We don't have to spend too much time on it, but it is just (laughs) gives me the heebie-jeebies. Now, this is the first one, not the second one. Yeah, I'm talking about the very first one, yep. Yeah, and this is what I meant. That's like, the one it, I think I spent the most time on. If I if I go back and I and if I've ever wanted to like, there's all these of course advertisements because I didn't preload them. Um, but if I go back and if I, you know, is this the movie? Oh, it's a Silent Hill movie which I never watched. Jeez <laughs> Louise, I didn't even know they. I forgot they made a movie. Oh no, you did. <laughs> but um, I always thought if I go back and play the, you know. The second one, I kind of feel like I want to play the first one. Boy, that's definitely brings you back to the PS1 graphics. Oh, nice uh, square, polygonal, boxy, polygon. But you know what's amazing? As bad as that was, they did a great job with the ambience. And I remember having a lot of jump scares yep. in this game. So Tons of jump scares. It wasn't only the you're in the dark and yeah. uh, you're searching around with flashlight. It was the music. Oh, it's creepy. And, then, and the sounds. Oh, scratches. Sounds so creepy. Oh yeah. Now they did a they did a I thought they did a remaster of this I one be, as well. I believe they did, yeah. Yeah. So if you wanna if you don't want to play with the screen, you can just see it's just it looks creepy as all get out. Anyway, testament to the PS1 that you can create that kind of ambiance. So yep. awesome. All right, my next one. Oh, I love this game. I still have yet to beat it. Um it's called now there's a series of it's called Little Little Nightmares. Now it's in the same vein as Limbo. Except uh, it is not it, it's not black and white. Um, it's it's a, like a full color game. Oh, and okay. I actually need to find a, a playthrough here. Um, so this game, <clears throat> you're a little kid and you're you don't really understand the situation. You're, you're trying to get through these obstacles. Now you can turn the camera. She has like a lighter. Yeah. Um, but there's these creatures. You can see oh, her lighter there. It looks good though. Oh, the game is amazing. Uh there's these creatures, like there's a like a a, a really heavy set grandma that's blind, and you have to sneak past her and any sound you make because the floor creaks. Well, that just sounds creepy. She'll grab you and like eat you and uh oh, yeah. And the world is skewed where like the table and chairs are massive and she's tiny. So you're trying to figure out what's going on in this world and you have to pick up certain objects and every now and then she grabs her stomach and she, it's like she's sick. So you kind of have to hurry getting her through it. Um, it is creepy, man. There's some jump moments in this game, uh, but it is, it is beautifully done. I, I highly recommend it. They have it for switch PlayStation, Xbox, all of them. It's so great. And the background, you're trying to figure out what's going on because like there's other children that are locked away in cages and being stolen and cooked and, it's awesome, man. So think of it like Limbo, but not black and white. So it's uh, it's awesome. I really yeah. encourage you to play it. Very good ad there. Yeah. All right, you're up. What's up? 
Uh, the last one I have to <laughs> give out to uh, Aliens Fireteam Elite. You know, we've uh, spent a lot of time on this. And you, you would think squad-based, you're uh, big colonial Marines, nothing's going to scare you. But the jump scares, they jump out of nowhere. You know, yeah. you've experienced it uh, on the playthroughs of me. You're walking down a hallway and they Dude, just this come is, out of nowhere. <laughs> this is Doug and I's jam, man. We talk about this with Neo Ness. We've played this game so much and it's for you're you're, you're on each other's team so you're not yep. playing against each other uh, although if you do the harder level it is friendly fires turned on and that makes it so difficult we got these levels memorized and even after memorization when you trigger a flood of aliens coming at you it is so it's, intense it's terrifying dude it is awesome it, it, this is it's such a great game it really is we need to go you back. Know, I don't know if I, I'll share a story real fast. Uh, and I don't know if we shared it on the uh, show or not, but I think we did. You, me, <laughs> our buddy Jeff playing that <laughs> game. And then the Doom song comes on. I, I won't spend too much time on it, but j- it set the whole mood. Yeah. I think uh, Neo Nest has not played this. If we could get him on uh, as a group, we'll play this together. Maybe try to stream it. You'd be fun uh, if we could capture it. It'd be a good time. Yeah. Especially get Ness on here and let's see how he does when we're, we're taking on that queen. <laughs> Oh, she's uh, she's a big one. Oh, my gosh. It's such a great game. I highly recommend it. It's on all yep. platforms as well. And what's cool is cross-platform play. Uh, well, you play mainly on PC, but you could play on, I thought you could play on a console and cross-platform yep, play. Yeah, it is cross-play game. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Great game. So good. So good. Uh, you got me on that one. You got me nostalgic. Now, my last one, I haven't played a lot, but um, I had to put it in here because it is iconic. And it's in the same vein of, of Alien, and it is um, Alien Isolation. Have you played Alien I've, Isolation? I've watched it. I think it's more fun to watch, <laughs> watch people playing it. Watching uh, people than... play it with VR. Yes, that's what, the, what I was going to say. That, oh, man. It's, it's a scary game because unlike Fireteam Elite, in Fireteam Elite, you, you have like, weapons yeah right this game you you're just you you just hide and that's really all you can do and you have to basically survive as the alien hunts you on the ship and you have to like get into certain uh bulkheads close doors you know and it's you can hear it overhead um they say this game is just wicked on vr and there's videos if you ever want a good laugh of people they showed the game like we're showing now what they see and then you see a, a, a half of the screen is them with the, the headset yeah. on. Oh, it's hilarious. Some people will fall out of their chairs because, you know, it, you'll look through a window like that and the alien will just pop up. Yeah. Uh, so this to me is like one of the ultimate Halloween games. If you want like constant jump scares. So I haven't played this a lot. I've actually watched more footage of it being played. Uh, but every single time, even when you're watching it, like sometimes you get a jump scare, you know, even yeah. now I'm like, keep an eye on gun on man when something will pop out. So, uh, it's a fun game. Uh, I highly recommend it. To me, I think it, it's classic. You know, so I don't know. Yep. Would you ever get into this one? I don't know. I think I would. Um, <laughs> the jump scares give me. You know, I uh, I feel better I if I had a flamethrower. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> flamethrower, a little doom music in the background. There you go. Have and our buddy with us. Laughter. Yeah. There you go. That's, yep. that's the only way to do it. Because even though I would get jump scared on Fire Team Elite, I, I knew if I just kept holding on the trigger you know something's you know, bound to happen yep and in this game you're alone you know no i like to adventure in scary places with friends so. i was gonna say i don't think i want to do this on my own the ambiance again is just oh yeah. chef kiss i mean and technically a lot of people compare this as like it's like a walking simulator you know but yeah yeah you're... Well, i thought that's what uh skyrim was every time i <laughs> lost my horse yeah it can be and yeah so anyway I, I would play it i think it's cool um and I know there's some games that we did that totally. There's some there's really tons scary of games, games we're missing. Oh, yeah. like the forest. Uh, there's just so many. Uh, yeah. You know the ones with the insane sign, like games like Alien Isolation, where you have to hide from like scary monsters. There's tons of those. Dead by Daylight. Yeah. Uh, there's just so many scary games out there because it's a huge genre. But these were the ones that were personal to us. So. Yep. Definitely. All right, brother. That was fun. Now yeah. I want to like go. Beef up my uh, my wish list on Steam for that Steam summer sale. And uh, I want to go play some of these games now. You got me already. This is good. Yeah, absolutely. All right, man. I think that's it. You can bring us home. Yeah. We want to uh, thank everybody for coming back to all of our new uh, subscribers. 
Uh, definitely don't just uh, listen to this one. Watch this one. Check out our long list of uh, stuff. We've got two seasons in. We've got tons and tons of great content. Uh, a lot of people interviewed in the uh, first season. A lot of people interviewed second. Uh, really good topics. So thank you all for subscribing. Like retro you. reviews. Don't and uh, retro reviews. Are those? Well, yeah. yeah. I know I need to get on and do a couple more myself. Yep. And we got a store. We got merch. Yes. See that flag behind Doug? Do you see that? That's our logo. And not only do we have that, we have an AI variant of the logo. Um, you know, even though Neo Ness said he's scared to death of AI and it's going to be the end of us. Uh, we used it to make t-shirts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, man, we're embracing. We're, we're embracing the, uh, the AI overlords. So, but yeah, go out there, check it out. Everything will be in the show notes. Uh, and we're working on having some future fun interviews very similar to ness uh and of course we want to have him back on and and many others that we've had in the past and so uh thank you for always coming back we're having a great time this is fun we love the interaction uh you guys are just awesome this is why we started this is because of the community of sharing the things that we love that's all things geek just like we're sitting around a table uh having some drinks and just sharing goofy stuff that we love so thank you for joining us we really appreciate it thank you very much all right we will see you guys next week yeah we're doing one next week we're good uh yeah (laughs) yeah. Uh, see you later